What's up? My name is Karina LeBlanc from the Canadian Olympic soccer team. I'm sitting here chilling at West Coast Mafia with the West Coast Auto Group Football Club. Uh, I still laugh when people say that celebrity status because I'm the biggest goof and, and I'm just a regular person. But, you know, when we left London, we, we were proud of the bronze medal. Um, we thought we'd accomplished somewhat of what we set out. But we also felt that we'd let the country down because we didn't have that gold. And arriving into Vancouver, I remember we walked out and walk, as we were walking out, we started hearing the national anthem. And I started getting emotional because I was like, there's, there's people here for us? And it was, there were so many people there. There were kids crying, parents crying, adults, grandparents crying. And it was one of those things like you dream of winning a medal, but you never really think of what happens after. And I remember walking out and just, breaking down because it was far greater than you could ever imagine. And I think for every setback I had, I used it to motivate me. I got cut from the first ever provincial team I tried out for. And uh, I remember being so gutted. I was in the car and all of my friends had made the team. And here I am and I used to walk around being like, I'm going to be an Olympian. And I got cut. And uh, I remember my dad turning to me in the car saying, so what are you going to do about it? And being cut was the best thing that ever happened to me because the next year I did 15 minutes more every day, either before practice or after practice or in the garage. Because I was like, this is my goal, this is my dream and you're not going to take it away from me. And the next year I tried it for a year older. I didn't even try it for my age. Made that team and got called into the full team months later. So it, it, the thing is, I think a lot of people have big dreams, but something happens and, and they think it's not for them anymore. You know, I could have listened to that coach who told me I wasn't good enough or I could have thought, oh, this is going to be too hard, but I just surrounded myself with the right people who had high and high goals and high visions. And for me, my family's everything. You know, they they're a huge part of the reason that I, who, for who I am today. And you know, I just I, I can easily get emotional talking about them because they've had such a big impact in my life. They always they never gave up on me. I don't want to talk too much about them because I get emotional. My family just because they. You know, they've been there through thick and th thin. They've been there when it was tough and nobody believed in me. I didn't even believe in myself. And, and I think they helped me get that confidence back. You know, it's, I, like I said, I, I still think it's incredible that people view me as that important. But like, I go back to when I was younger and I met somebody that I had adored and I looked up to and they didn't have the time of day for me, and it broke my heart. And then I remember meeting somebody that I looked up to and they, they gave me that five seconds, and it, it made me. And I think that as athletes, we can't take that lightly. You have to understand your role. And that five seconds, that 30 seconds, that minute, could change someone's life. And if you have the ability to change them, and make their day or make their life or change the course or path that they're on, that's incredible. And I can never take that for granted. And that's something that every athlete or whoever is in that position needs to take that with care because it's going to be gone one day. And if it's somebody's life that you can affect and you affect it negatively, that's unacceptable. You know, I remember coming back from London and, you know, there were a lot of appearances and one of the ones that was most special to me was when I had here at West Coast Mazda. Um, it was within a week of being back, and it was um, my first big appearance in Maple Ridge. And it was people who lined up to come see me, you know, the little kids crying as they walked up and, you know, just freaking out. You know, and it, it's like one of those things where we talked about being a role model, but, you know, you feel like you want to spend more time with every single person. <laughs> you know, you, you think that, you know, just signing and saying hi and taking the pictures isn't enough because I really want to get to know everyone. I want to thank everyone because this is the community that made me.